Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Uh, we're going to be continuing on with some more EMS quick study tips here and focus on poisoning and overdose. And we're moving on to the assessment of your poisoning and overdose patient. Um, and again, this is a quick overview, guys, giving you uh, some key elements here when it comes to preparing for exams, right? That's why this is important because I'm hoping that when I go over these key elements here, things you would normally see that are very popular on EMS exams, that if you don't understand it, you don't recall what it is I'm talking about, it doesn't make sense to you, you'll crack open your textbook, you'll go online and research it, you'll use a resource like TurboMedic and go ahead and master that content. Because once you do, and once you master that content and you fully understand it, walking into your exam, documenting, right, and presenting and understanding what's going on with the patient clinically will be much, much easier, okay? Um, so let's get into this, guys, and we're talking about assessment, like I said, and we want to find out what you're going to ask your patient, what signs and symptoms are very common, physical findings that are common, Right, you want to, and also on the uh, your focus, focus physical exam. Now, what do you want to ask your patient? Well, of course, you want to know what was taken, right? What was the substance, whether it was a poisoning or an overdose? Find out what it was that was taken. You want to find out how much was taken, whether it was ingested, inhaled, right? Um, whether they drank it, was it a pill? Okay, all that type of stuff. Okay, and find out when that poisoning when that overdose occurred and that can be kind of tricky as well as you know how much sometimes you got to kind of play detective on scenes to find out when something was taken or how much sometimes family doesn't know the patient might be altered somewhat or lethargic and not able to tell you or they are lying because they don't want to tell you right especially your overdose patients or your suicidal patients right and find out what was done for the patient so far? What's been going on? What have they done for the patient? Or has the patient even done for themselves before you got there? Okay, they might have called poison control. They might have, you know, maybe thrown up, something like that. Okay, find out what's been done for that patient before you got there. Now, signs and symptoms, okay, when you're assessing the patient, they're going to vary. They're going to, of course, vary on what the poisoning was, what the OD was, how long ago they've taken it, all that good stuff, right? But these are some common signs and symptoms that you'll see when it comes to poisonings and overdoses. You're going to see the burning of burning of the tearing of the eyes. You're going to see patients that might be in respiratory distress. They might be cyanotic, maybe the peripheral cyanosis or, or central cyanosis. You might see patients who are nauseous or vomiting. Maybe they have diarrhea. Look for patients that may might be salivating or be diaphoretic, right? They might be sweating a lot. Patients might complain or appear to be weak to you. They might complain of, of being dizzy or having a headache. They might even have a seizure, okay? And also, patients might also be uh, have an altered level of consciousness. And that depends upon, of course, again, the substance that they've taken, how much they've taken, Okay, what what point in the in how long ago they've taken it they're at that may make them altered. Okay, you know, someone who somebody who just took a bunch of um, you know Valium might not be altered yet. They just took it, right? So depending upon where they are, okay. So it's going to vary on the substance. It's going to vary on how much you've taken. What these signs and symptoms are going to be. Now, what are your physical findings? Well, when it comes to the pulse, this is pretty common right this is common sense type stuff um you know if they're tachycardic if the heart rate is elevated usually if they've taken stimulants if if the heart rate is slow or bradycardic that means they've taken some sort of depressant uh some sort of a heart medication or maybe even pesticide they might have been exposed to that okay um your patient's respiratory rate usually we're talking increased when you talk about children that might might have taken um aspirin a lot of times, the child's respiratory rate will be elevated, um, and the patient's respiratory rate will be depressed if they've if they've taken narcotics, maybe some sort of sed sedative, or they might if they've been exposed to uh, CO. Right. So those are some of the the, the physical signs. We talk about the pulse and respiratory 
um, rates. Now, patient's temperatures, if they're elevated, that could be from aspirin. That could be from stimulants. If the temperature is low, it could be from alcohol use. It could be from sedatives or narcotics. The patient's blood pressure, again, this is kind of common sense, right? Normally, we decrease if they've taken depressant. The blood pressure will probably be elevated if they've taken stimulants or been exposed to some sort of stimulant. Okay, these are common common things. But again, these are general physical findings, general signs and symptoms. Okay, we're going to get into this more much deeper in future episodes when we kind of focus in on actual, um, you know, poisoning types, you know, whether col- cholinergics or um, uh, anticholinergics or narcotics, things like that. Okay, we'll get into that in future episodes. These are general findings that you want to keep an eye out for. Now, your focused physical exam. Well, we talk about the respiratory system, right? Poisonings and overdoses can cause, of course, respiratory depression. It can cause airway obstructions, dis- you know, respiratory distress, and even wheezing. And this, again, is going to depend upon what they've taken, how much, and all that, okay? But these are, again, key elements, key things you're going to look for, all right? Cardiovascular system. You can have a patient that might have an irregular heart rate. They could be complaining of chest pain or be in shock. And, of course, cardiac arrest, right? I mean, think about a patient who is had respiratory depression, right? Respiratory and ends up, they're not breathing. Eventually, they're going to go into cardiac arrest, right? So, again, it depends upon how long, what the, symptom, what the, the substance was, okay, where they might be within this exam, within your, your physical findings. Finally, neurological. Usually we check for pupil size with that, right? And what are we looking for? Well, if narcotics, you know, opioids, we're going to see that, that meiosis, right? That constricted pupils. And for stimulants, the pupils normally will be dilated. So again, just quick overview. And again, this stuff here, common, right? We know this already. We've been exposed to this. Usually we've, this is something that gets focused on and drilled into us, right? But if you don't know why the patient's pupils constrict when they're on narcotics or why they dilate when they're on a stimulant, crack open a textbook, get a broader understanding of it. It's going to help you when you're reading that paragraph of a question to zero in on what it is you're looking for. Okay, this the, these are bullet points here, guys. This is basic stuff, right? Again, my hope that you will go and crack open a textbook and and look more, Okay. So that you can master that content, build your knowledge base. So you walk into that exam, you know what are you looking at, right? Every question is not going to be when the patient's on narcotics, the pupils will a constrict, b dilate. No, it's not going to. It's not necessarily going to be like that, right? More and more EMS exams are becoming where there's a paragraph of a question. There's a much much bigger um, stem, right? So. In that STEM, they're working in all these words and all these different findings and signs and symptoms and all, and you got to figure that out. This is why it's important to know the, the, the broader aspect of these, okay? All right, finally, guys, I want to go over just quick general care of the patient that might be poisoned or overdosed, right? And again, we're going to go into deeper management of patients with specific things in future episodes. I'm just kind of giving going over a broad stroke right now. And next week, we're going to start on more specific areas, okay? So, of course, your ABCs or your CABs, right? Your, your cardiovascular, your, 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 your you know, um, circulatory airway and breathing or your airway breathing circulation, right? You're going to check vital signs. You're going to check an EKG. Position the patients so they don't end up aspirating anything should they vomit. Oxygen if they need it, maybe even aggressive airway management like a, a King Airway or an endotracheal tube, right? Patients might need to be restrained, especially if they're violent or suicidal. Of course, you're going to follow your local guidelines when it comes to that and how you're going to go about doing that, whether it's a mechanical restraint or chemical restraint, okay? But that's something that you might have to use when you're caring for these types of patients. And you want to notify your 
emergency department when you're coming in. Okay, let them know what you're coming in with. They want to know if you're bringing in a violent patient. They want to know if you're bringing in somebody who's overdosed or who's poisoned, right? Um, bring the pill bottles if you can. Bring the pills if you can. Any containers, maybe. Even a sample would be good, okay? And believe it or not, if you have a patient who's been bit by a snake or bit by a spider, if you have that dead steak or you have that dead spider, put it in a bag. Don't carry it in your hand like a prize, but put it in a bag or something and take it with you. It might help to identify, okay, that that snake or that spider, what they can or cannot do for that patient. All right, so that's it for for, for this week's um, session, guys. Again, very general stuff, very general, you know, information, right? Because I'm just trying to kind of get give you a broad uh, kind of strokes here, right? But next time, we're going to get a little more specific. Again, general for the types, right? Like cholinergics, we're going to get general on it. But it's going to be a little more um, focused on what you're looking for, okay? The signs and symptoms, okay? What it does, right? We're going to get into that more uh, starting next week. We're going to break that down because we've got different sections of that. We're going to break it down to nice, nice chunks so you can really drill down and understand it. And again, if you don't, hopefully it's going to motivate you and drive you to crack open that textbook and find out more information. All right, so that's it for me, guys. I hope you can use these Monday Minutes. I hope they come in handy and they, they've triggered some, some driving you to study a little bit more, to research a little, a little bit more, and to build your knowledge base, guys, right? It's not all about getting through school and leaving it behind you. You got to get through school. You got to keep learning. You got to keep studying. You got to keep building that knowledge base, right? The patients don't follow the textbook, but you have to know what's going on with them. It's going to help you with your assessments with your care, with your documentation, with your presentations, and yes, with your EMS exams. Guys, follow me on any of these social media platforms. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. These are the links that you can click on. It will take you directly to my pages where you can join me there. And on Snapchat, I am EMS safe, okay? I'd love to be able to join with you and communicate with you and you know make you part of that those platforms as well so i hope to see you on any of those platforms soon all right that's it for me guys again questions comments concerns let me know send me an email it's contact at emsofficehours.com until next time as always i am jim hoffman stay safe